All right, so I haven't done a proper setup tour since the move here into the new office, and I've updated quite a bit since the last setup tour, so let me show you what I'm working with. Actually, before I start, let me beat you to it and say, is all this necessary to become a profitable trader? Absolutely not, but I'll share some of my thoughts on that at the end of the video, all right? So let's start with the monitors because that's probably the first thing you notice. So I have three 55 inch Samsung Odyssey Arcs. I like to have my monitors vertically when I'm trading. So when these came out, I pretty much jumped on them. These are the biggest vertical monitors you can buy at the moment. And I already did a full review on them if you wanna check that out. But long story short, not worth the full price tag. And I returned them initially at release and ended up rebuying them when they went on sale for over 40% off. And then the two monitors to the left are my old monitors. I used to trade on four of these. These are the LG 43 inch 4K monitors and two went to my wife's office and two was just collecting dust in my old office. So I recently said, why not just set them up to use for my thumbnail charts. Especially since the three Odyssey Arcs is actually a downsize from my previous setup because they're all 4K monitors. The only difference is their size. So changing from four screens to three, I pretty much lost one whole screen of real estate. So now bringing these back, I pretty much have what I used to have, plus one extra that I don't really need there. My sweet spot is any four 4K monitors will do, really. And if it was up to me, I wish these monitors came in six or even 8K so that I can downsize to just two of these monitors, which was the original plan, but at the time I didn't realize that it's the resolution that matters, not the screen size. So for me, it was kind of a pointless upgrade other than the aesthetics. So having said that, do I regret it at all? Maybe like that much because bigger isn't always better, especially for trading. Again, I wish these came in like 8K because all this did was make the charts and the candlesticks, the fonts just bigger, meaning more I travel across the screens now. And I still haven't figured out the issue connecting more than one Odyssey Arc on my main PC. So all the monitors are connected to two custom PCs I built myself. The right two monitors are connected to my old PC, which I trade on. And then the left three monitors are connected to this PC, my main PC, which I scan on, and also game and edit, things like that. So here's the issue. Because the Odyssey Arcs only takes HDMI and not display ports, I know it's dumb. If I wanna connect more than one to the same PC, one can be HDMI to HDMI, no problem. But the second one, has to be DisplayPort to HDMI output. Now it works perfectly fine on my 2080 card, but not on my 4090 card. For some reason, it just doesn't register the second monitor. I've tried updating the drivers. I've tried using different cables, but still doesn't work. So if you have any solutions for me, please let me know. And I'll put up all the specs for the PCs. And then on my desk, I still use the same keyboard. This is a Philco Majestouch or Magis Touch 2 keyboard. And I just put custom keycaps on them that I found on Amazon. But I always wanted to try building my own custom mechanical keyboard, but I just never really found the time. And everything's always sold out. So this was kind of like my lazy way of doing things. And my mouse is also the same mouse I've been using, but this one is a brand new one because the old one broke. It actually had a crack on it from a while back and it finally gave up. And I have that hooked to a mouse bungee so the weight of the cord doesn't drag my mouse. And this beat up mouse pad is one I just can't seem to get rid of. It's a free one that came with an EVGA graphics card from my first PC build. So I can't even buy a new one if I wanted to because it was part of like a special edition bundle thing. I love the feel of it. I haven't found anything with the same surface, but I also stopped looking. So maybe there is something now. And then this is just a wrist pad to help with my wrist when I'm using the mouse. And then I have my famous, then I have my famous X keys keypad I use for my hotkeys when I'm trading. I trade on two different platforms and this allows me to quickly get in and out of trades on both. I think this was built mostly to use for editing, but I found it works really great for trading as well. And then for my mic, I still have the same Shure SM7B, but I changed out the boom arm. So before I used to use the blue compass and on that one, I used to always have to mess with the knobs to make adjustments. But this one just stays wherever you put it. I don't know how it works so well, but no adjustments needed. It just works right out of the box. And the mic is connected to this Rodecaster Pro 2, which now replaced my old Behringer mixer. And my three-year-old son would always mess with that thing because it had all the knobs and buttons on it. And I don't know what he did, but one day it just didn't work anymore. This one, much more high-tech. It's got all the fun features on it. It's got the voice changers. It's got sound effects. Can do podcasts on them if I want. And it's got a built-in booster 
So that also replaced uh, the collar lifter that I had to use before because of the Shure SF7B. I also have this headset connected to it. This is a Audio-Technica broadcaster headset. It has a mic on it. This was the mic I was using before the Shure SM7B and now acts as a backup. I also changed out the ear pads for a more comfortable one. I also have a mini stream deck to control what I'm projecting and I also can turn on and off my Elgato key light which is convenient for when I'm doing the live trading videos. For the camera, this is a Sony a6300, which I've had forever with the Sigma lens, which I probably should put the cover on so the FBI can't spy on me. And it connects to my PC through a cam link to make it all work. I always have a calculator to calculate things. My share sizing sheet, which I made a full video on and what that's for. Uh, my blue light glasses, because I'm looking at a bunch of screens all day. That is a picture of my son, got a candle, Specifically a dip tea candle helps with relaxation and has everything smelling good uh, Some phone chargers Remotes for the monitors all labeled on the back left center and right that I use to open Amazon boxes Some ear pods or air pods. I think they're called lip balm because I hate having chapped lips and Water because I don't like to eat during the trading day um, so I like to stay hydrated and That is pre-workout. So I have a gym in my backyard and I like to train during what I call lunch hour when things slow down during the trading day. So something to help me since I'm always working out on an empty stomach. And then hidden behind the LG monitors, I have a PS4, which I haven't played on in a while. I've been playing some Diablo 4 lately. And this big boxy thing is a printer, which I use to print out all my trading journal sheets on, which you see me write on every day. And then this is a MacBook, which I use to work on when I travel. And everything is connected to three backup power supplies. The last thing I want is for the power to go out when I'm trading. So this gives me time to manage or exit positions if I need to and not get f***ed over. And the desk is a custom built desk to help accommodate the monitors. The main desk is the Carlby countertop. It's the one that's 42 inches deep just so I'm sitting further back and not killing my neck on the big monitors. And to get the length right, what we had to do is put two of them together. Of course, I've looked into tables that were just one piece that matched my specs that I needed, but the cheaper ones were running for like three, $4,000. So I thought I already have one Carlby countertop from my old desk, so why not just buy another one and connect it to it? So it ended up costing me around $400 and a part of my Saturday, and it literally made it 10 times cheaper. And then the legs are from Uplift Desk. I love to trade standing up, and this is from their commercial line because these Odyssey Arcs are super heavy. Each one is like over 90 pounds. So that's like 300 pounds just off the monitors. And these legs handles it like nothing. And then this desk is also a Carlby countertop, but I think it's the 90 inch length with the 30 inches deep. And it's also sitting on uplift desk legs to kind of make a L-shaped sit-stand desk. And I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit from my cable management, but whatever. And I like to stand on these mats that helps with getting fatigue from standing. It actually works pretty well, but the leather kind of chips off on it. And then when I'm not standing, I still have the Herman Miller and body chair that I've had for a while now. So that is my setup. And like I mentioned before, all of this is absolutely not necessary for me to do what I do. But I'm at a point in my career where I can have nice things. I mean, does LeBron James or Steph Curry need to practice shots at the best facilities and the best arenas? No, they can probably practice those same shots in any court, right? As long as it's NBA regulation. But are they at a point in their career where they can? Most definitely. So why not? Why continue to play in the same shit court they may have started in when they can afford to make their work more convenient and enjoyable? And that's what this is. It's a luxury I accumulated over time. And you know, I love tech. This is where I spend most of my time in my home office. So why not make it a cool place to be in? So hope you enjoyed this one. I will try to list everything mentioned in this video below. As always, I appreciate you for being here and I hope to see you on the next one. Let's